Why, hello there, mountain sages and desert monks alike. Shams Nelson here from Fantastic Anatomy, and I'm here to show you guys a really cool method, a really stress-free, fun way to create great-looking landscapes and really explore and have fun with digital painting using the lasso tool um, as the main method for creating these works of art. And um, what I created here, I meant to create a video about how to do mountains in particular, but what I found that I did is an overview of the entire process. So, and I really want to, in future uh, episodes, get in-depth one episode about mountains, one episode about rivers, one episode about trees, and go really deeply in-depth on different types of mountains, different kinds of trees, etc. So, um, what you'll see here is an overview of the whole process, and by the end of this video, you'll be able to make all sorts of landscapes on your own using this method. Okay, cool. Let's get started with drawing our mountain landscape. So, let me go over here and create a new document. And you're going to want your document to be 300 pixels resolution. And then the size, I always go to inches here and choose something that like I could print on a piece of paper. So 9 by 6 is fine. You can make it bigger if you have a fast computer. My computer isn't super fast. So if I get to really big resolution sizes, it's going to really slow down the computer. So that's a happy medium I found. So let's go ahead and we're going to make lots of layers. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, label these. A lot of times when I'm working fast, I don't, uh, I don't bother. It's probably not the best thing, but I seem to be able to keep track of what's going on. So let's do a daytime scene since the time lapse was a nighttime scene. So choose a nice blue color. And what I would recommend is kind of like following along, but if you want to be like, okay, let me do a, a cooler blue, I like that better, then it's not going to really make that much of a difference. Actually, I'm going to even go to a little bit of the green. I'm going to do something, try a little. I'm going to try that. Let's see how that looks. And we can always change these later. Oh, so I created a new layer. Oops. All right, then you're going to want to take your lasso tool. And there's a couple lasso tools. There's the regular one, the polygonal. So you could do something like this where it goes straight lines. Okay. But I'm going to use the regular lasso tool because that's what I always use. So when you finish making, I'll show you how the lasso tool works in a second in case you're not familiar. But you can do Command D to deselect it. And that's just going to undo what you've done. And the magnetic one... Uh, we won't worry about here. So the lasso tool, you can make shapes, and then if you let go, it'll automatically connect them with a straight line. Or you can come here and meet up at the straight uh, uh, at the end. You can also hold down, and this is really important. You can make a one, one lasso tool selection. Hold down Shift, and now you can make multiple. So you just keep your finger down on Shift to do this. And then, um, oppositely, if you want to take out a chunk, see the minus sign came up, you click Option. This is on a Mac. On a PC, I think it's the same, but whatever the equivalent to Option is. And then Command D is Deselect. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a mountain. We're going to do kind of the same composition as the other one, but um, I'm going to add something like a waterfall or something in here, maybe, to switch it up a little bit. I thought my birds were going to be quiet, but they're going to be loud, apparently. It's too loud, Muffin. Okay, I'm back. I put them in the bathroom. They love to look at themselves in the mirror, so that'll keep them occupied. So, to take, um, so now you've got the first lasso tool, and the next thing you want to do is you make a new layer. Let's call this Mountains 1. And you're going to want to make a lot of new layers because that will allow you to adjust things later on. So let's go ahead and take this color and just make it a little bit darker. And a little bit, so usually what's in the foreground is warmer and what in the background is cooler. Something called atmospheric perspective, which means that the blue of the sky basically, like things as they go farther away, they become more close to the color of the blue of the sky. Um... That might not be the best explanation, but it's what you need to know for this. And so I'm going to make this warmer. I'm going to move towards um, 
the red. So here's the color down here. I'm going to move it towards the red and I'm also going to make it darker. And then use that for the color of the mountains. And I think you can get creative if you want. See, this is even a little bit too uh, dark. So, okay, Command H is hide. And see, the if I do it again, the selection is still there but it hides it so that you can see more clearly what you're doing. See this looks more like it's far in the background. So I'm gonna go with that, I like that better. I think this is the sky's a little too saturated but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it. Now let's just go ahead and do um, let's make the lake, let's just do all the mountains and then we'll add the lakes and stuff later. Mountains 2. Okay, same exact thing. And see there's like a, oh maybe I'll make this one really high. Okay. And it really doesn't matter, just kind of try to be random about it. And then here, this is like uh, the where the um, the lake will be. So I'm imagining there's going to be a lake right here. I'll put that in uh, after we do the mountains. So this is a little too straightforward for me. I'm thinking maybe I'll use the, um, the erase to do something interesting. See, so it looks like a chunk came off. And I can do... Uh, all right, let's leave that. Fine. Why not? Or no, you know what? Over here too. So it's better or worse? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, we can always adjust it later. And uh, it, it, once you do everything, like little details, they don't seem out of place. So let's go ahead and we're gonna fill this in on mountains two layer. Remember, keep track of what layer you're on. So let's option when you click option it changes to the eyedropper tool so I used that before I should have explained so hold down option and click here to get this color right down here then I click that and come down actually you can also just have this up so I can do that over here too if you have the color swatch from view window color alright so uh, so click here make it go down make it a little warmer so the thing is, so this is coming closer, so it's going to be darker and um, and a little bit warmer. See, so that actually looks really cool once you shade it in. All right, deselect. So that's good. And then let's do one more mountain in the very foreground. Um, this is like where you're standing, looking out at this view. And I like to do like a tree too. So let's add that afterwards. So. Maybe there's a rock. Cool. And what you need to do is go around the edges. You can go past the borders to uh, to finish off the circle. And if you mess up and you come across here, you just hold down the plus and then add the, the area here. Okay. So let's do option click there. Move it down. Move it a little bit warmer. I want this one pretty dark because it's in the far foreground. Oops, see, I'm on the old layer, so I forgot to make a new layer. Mountains 3. Or actually, I'll call this one foreground. Does it have an E? Or is it foreground? No. I think that's right. Alright, whatever. Cool. And actually, you can do the hide, so you can see how it looks. Diesel, command D to deselect. That's fine. So um, let's add the tree, though. And I'm going to do the tree on the same layer, actually. So let's go foreground. Let's say I want to add a tree right here. Oops. And trees are the same thing. Like, you can mess up. No, like, yeah, you just kind of do random stuff, and if you don't like it, so then hide. So I use the paint bucket tool this time just to fill in that piece, and I'm still on the foreground. And there's a little tiny, you'll see a tiny, tiny, tiny line right there. Um, so if you want to, you can just come in with the basic hard round brush on Photoshop at uh, turn the opacity off and turn this one on because the pressure sensitivity and just fill that in. Okay, see like that was messed up but then it's like alright that looks cool whatever but if I wanted to I just take this hard round brush and I would go look hide. 
See, this is still selected, so I need to deselect. You might, if something goes wrong and you're confused, it's probably because you hit this and you forgot. That's what happens to me anyways. So, Command D to deselect, and then uh, you can just paint on it. Another little trick is you can take a chunk out. So, let's say just go that maybe, and then just delete. Alright, so that's cool. Let's leave that for the for the tree. And then if you wanted you could even do a little a little dude standing here. G is for the paint bucket tool. That looks weird. But if you want to sculpt out a little guy. And if you don't, then you can just lasso tool him, click delete, and he's gone. Alright, cool. So, let's add the lake really quickly. So the lake is going to be behind this one, but in front of this one. So I found Mountains 1. I'm going to click a new layer. It'll make a layer above it. See, it's in between Mountains 1 and 2. Click Lake. And let's go here, and these shape tools are the same as the... They make a selection, just like the Lasso tool, but you can do a square or an ellipse. And so we're just going to go like that and kind of pay attention to where it goes through like if it was right on there you don't want tangents right on there is a tangent too so right now I'm thinking could I make it lower should I make it lower um, I want to have a big waterfall coming through or maybe I'll carve this out more um, yeah let's go ahead and make it a little bit lower so I don't like the tangent right there Oops. Um, alright, how about, oops, no, maybe I should have just gone with the first one, I think I'll make it higher, let's do that, fine, alright, and then one thing I like to do with this is make it the same color as the sky, because it's reflecting the sky, so now I go deselect, command D, and there we have the lake in the sky, and we'll add gradients and stuff later, so, this is, now you have the basic composition. From this point on, you just got to figure out, um, you're going to add details and really have fun with it. So let's go ahead and make the, the river, since we're working with water real quick. So that'll show me a chance, give you a chance to show you. You can just come back to Mountains 1 in the background, take your lasso tool, and carve out a piece. Just click Delete. And it looks like... Uh, it could have been any any piece. I mean, it was there from the beginning. So what I'm trying to do, I've never really done this before, but I thought it would be cool. So we'll see if it works. Is make like a little river um, coming out here. So this is where it's like carving through the mountain. So let's go ahead. What would it be on top of or underneath? Well, the thing is, actually, the river is going to be on this layer. It's never going to go off it, and I want it to sync up right to that corner right there. So I don't like how that's rounded. Okay. Uh, fine, let's leave it like that. I don't know if I'm digging it, but we'll see. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. I'm going to call this river. But what I want to make sure is that the river only stays, it doesn't go onto the sky area. It only stays where the mountain is. So uh, let's go ahead. Now we're gonna take, we're gonna right-click the river, and we're going to go to create clipping mask. And that'll that'll do is it won't. All right, let's have it. We just have it flow in. I was gonna try to do a waterfall, but. And the thing with this is, it's cool that you don't really have to get it perfect. Actually, I should have done some sharper, sharper turns and corners, maybe like that. And uh, here, maybe smaller because it's in the oops, in the distance. So I'm going to carve away a little bit. And see, it disconnected there, but that might actually have a cool effect. So now that it's got, it's only going to paint on here. This part I don't have to worry about. It won't paint on that. And I'm going to come here and uh, actually I'll just fill this one in too. So I get the same color as the. Uh, that's the lake. Let's try that. And I'm going to do hide so I can see what it looks like. See when it breaks right there? It looks cool, actually. So little mistakes like that are uh, work out fine. 
All right, cool. The one thing is uh, maybe here, the mountain is coming over it. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect and come in like this and delete. Oh, on the river layer. So you gotta stay on the right layer. Oh, so that's what I had. I already had a big dip here. All right, whatever. Let's leave it. I'm not gonna be nitpicky. This isn't this uh, process isn't supposed to be about being nitpicky, but just kind of like having fun with it. So like, what I actually might do is make another little uh, stream coming off. That sounds kind of fun. Got to think like Bob Ross here. And this one, I'm gonna color in with my uh, regular brush tool. So hide H, hide selection. I know it's down there, and I just go like that. I mean, this actually came down a little too too strongly straight down. I get kind of messed with the perspective, so I'm gonna go deselect, and then have this one come over here. Okay, and then I'll come in with my brush tool, hide it. I'm just going to draw that in. Great. Whatever. Uh, I don't like it. I'm going to erase it. How about I just leave it like that? It's kind of interesting. And then actually I'll do my brush tool. I'll do one more little fan out because that's the delta right there. Oops. I said I wasn't going to get nitpicky and then I got nitpicky. All right, cool, whatever. All right, let's go back to mountains because that's what we're really working on here. So um, so now on mountain layer one, we're gonna do the same thing and see if I click on mountain layer one and I already have a clipping mask, this one becomes a clipping mask. You can tell by that arrow. So I'm gonna just call this snow. And uh, we'll do snow first on these and then we'll do, uh, maybe there's, all right, yeah, let's just do some snow. So snow, you're just gonna go like this. And actually, sometimes it's fun to do, to not do these layers first, and do the whole mountain with the snow, and then come continue on to do the other ones because you want it to like live through this. You don't want to like be thinking about the parts or ignoring the parts that are covered up uh, by the mountains in the foreground. So I'd suggest hiding the layers by clicking a little I by the layers over here. And you have little patches of snow, and I try not to keep them too evenly distributed, so uh, kind of try to be a little more random. And then when you do these kind of like fan shapes, see that? That's like the mountain is falling on both sides of here. So you can emphasize that like that. It gives the mountain a lot of form. Maybe like I'm thinking, okay, what if the, the snow's collecting these little crevices? where the mountains meet, and there's some on the peak as well. And it's okay to go over because we've created a clipping mask. So oh, I'm not on the right layer. I gotta come down here and go on snow. It's okay to do the lasso tool on another layer, but when you start filling it in, you've gotta be on the correct layer. All right, so let me do this a little faster. You really don't have to think about it too much, but it's fun to think about it. I like to think like, oh, a little patch of snow here. Do, do, do. Like I said, Bob Ross style. All right. No, I'm really getting lazy. And also kind of cartoon style, where there's just like that kind of snow on the peak. Okay, and you're about to see some magic. Now, I like to use a textured brush for the next step. Um, you could use, there are some that come with Photoshop. I have this one from this uh, Kyle... Webster's Mega Pack, and it's like, uh, I think it's this charcoal pencil, and then I just make it really, really big, so you can see more of the bristles. They're not really, really big, but pretty big. Turn on the opacity, and this. But it's only like 20, 20, 14 bucks or something like that, so I'm going to go hide, like this big, and kind of come like that, and see how it has the speckles, but... It's only going to fill in where I put those uh, selections. Is this the one that I like to use? I don't think so, actually. No, it's this one over here. Chunky charcoal. 
that's it. I like this chunky charcoal one. Oops. So what I do is I get this and I make it a lighter color. I like to make it warmer too usually. And it's kind of getting monotonous so if you wanted to make it like, let's see what pink snow looks like. It's interesting. Alright, but I'm going to keep it pretty basic. So I'm going to go here, make it lighter. And, uh, I mean, actually that other one was, was good, but it was taking too long. See, this one I can just swipe really easily and kind of start getting. So I like this modeled look, so I'm just going to leave those there. Alright, and so now you've got this mountain range appearing before your very eyes. And you can add shadow, too. So if you wanted to do that, it would be the same process. I'm going to leave the shadows. I'll do the shadows on the next mountain. How about that? Let's, what do we want. Let's go to this mountain. I'm going to create a new layer. I'll call it shadow. And then I'll do create clipping mask on this mountains too. This one right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select where the shadows might be. So let's say the sun's on this angle. Um, I'm not really worried about it too much. Like... I'm just kind of, I'm kind of trying to imagine a form underneath, but not worrying about the details. Something this sticks out, so this half is in shadow, and so it would probably be something like this in shadow, and uh, here. But I'm not sure I'm going to leave do shadow on this. If I'll leave it there, well, we'll see. All right, why not? I can always get rid of it at the end. I've already done the work. So like that, and then this part, let's see, that's a big area of shadow. And maybe take out a little chunk, like there's a rock sticking up that's catching the light or something. That might be interesting. Oops. I'm just holding down Option to add that. So it looks pretty crazy right now, and actually let me hold down Shift and add one more rock over here. And then over here, it's kind of got its own shadow. Okay. Doing something like that could, will make an interesting like formation. If you put something like that, it'll look like it's layered, maybe. Alright, let's just leave that. And then here you can just take this uh, paint bucket tool, make sure it's... Um, I think, let's see, contiguous, I think, yeah, you want it on, okay. So, but, oops, I did deselect, so I'm going to do Command-Z to undo. And then, uh, so this looks like the mountains can blown from the left side with a lot of uh, snow. But I wanted it to be a shadow. So I'm going to go here and go down, and since we've been moving warmer, we can go cooler for the shadow. I don't know if I'm going to like that, though, oops. So I'm going to delete everything there and just do it again. Hide it. Now we're going to lower the opacity on this and turn this to a multiply layer. So opacity here is around 33%, but just do it until whatever looks good. So it's kind of cool that this one doesn't have or has more shadows on it because it's closer up. So let's go ahead and leave that, but let's make the shadows more, uh, a little more subtle. And then we're also going to add snow here. So the shadow layer is going to want to go above the snow because the snow is also in shadow. I'm going to grab the lasso tool and just, so this is a sharp peak, so I don't know how the snow would, would gather on there. So I'm going to just kind of think, okay, where would the snow gather? Maybe here, maybe a little here, and it can be on, uh, you know, on the edge of, of ledges and stuff. Snow does gather like that. Okay, so let's see if the peaks are wind blown and uh, uh, the snow comes off. Notice I don't have my foreground there because I want to draw through it. But I'm going to keep my snow in the upper reaches. Let's say it's a little patchy. It's not like this mountain's covered in snow, so this region um, isn't completely. You know, there isn't snow everywhere, maybe some here by the lake, it's a little cooler or something, I don't know, whatever. So let's leave it a little patchy like that. Go here, I got my big brush, this is the uh, chunky charcoal, 
I'm going to grab a white color, I can just grab it right off here, but make it lighter because it may not be at full opacity there. And also we're a little closer, so maybe even make it a little warmer. Okay. So I'm going to hide this. I'm on the right layer, snow. And I can just go ahead and shade it in. Uh, oops. I didn't get enough texture here, so I'm going to erase this and do it over again. See, so you like that because it's kind of like melting more. Alright, that's cool. And then let's turn on the foreground. Great, our, our landscape's really coming along, I think. So how about in the foreground there's just small patches of snow. Or, you know, we could even leave it like this. No, let's add some shadows at least. So let's add a couple shadows. Oops. Deselect. Command D to deselect. Make this whole area. And shadows. And then take out a little chunk. And some shadows here. Just considering the light coming mostly from above and a little bit from this direction, I guess. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, if that's your thing, then that's great, but I'm not that perfectionist. And I noticed that if you, um, when the whole thing is done, people aren't going to be looking at, like, the tiny little details. I like to leave this by itself. I noticed that works well. Um, you could add a shadow from the tree, something like that. And then uh, this part. Shadows, and then let's take a little chunk out. I like to do that. So it's all about negative space. And so that's what you want to think about. Like how this big chunk, how can I make it more interesting? Add a little, cut a little couple chunks out. Okay, cool. Now it's more interesting. So I'm going to hide the selection. I'm also going to use uh, the brush for this because some texture in the foreground would be good. So select this, make it really dark. Um, a little warmer, let's say. Oh no, it's a shadow, so the shadows are cooler. It's actually a little bit cooler and darker. Oh yeah, and then I have to change it to multiply. Yeah, like that's kind of cool having that shadow like that. Maybe there's a forest back there. Oh, and I forgot to make a new layer. So right now I just painted on this layer. But I don't really want that. So I'm just going to go back. Because then I can't adjust the opacity. Okay, so on the last lasso I did, create a new layer. So I got to keep keep this in mind. This is the one uh, tricky part. Let's do shadow. Okay. okay it's easy just to do something similar again. And then I want to lower the opacity and make put it on multiply. Something like that. Yeah, that's nice. Cool. I'm liking how this it really brings out the purple. So a couple more things we could do. One thing I'm thinking is the sky. I think it's a little too saturated. I've been thinking that since the beginning. So let's go back to the sky layer. I'm going to click here, lower the saturation a little bit. Oops. And then deselect, command D. See, it didn't work. Why isn't it working? Why isn't it working? Command D and then click because something here was selected so just can deselect. No, that's not working. Maybe actually make it a little darker. No, that's not working either. Okay, well one thing we'll do is we'll do a color adjustment layer at the end. Um, so maybe, so it looks like it's working with the composition and it's interesting actually having this whole thing be one thing. So let's go ahead and leave that. All right. So what other steps can, will we take to finish this painting off? Well, one thing is let's continue the atmospheric perspective by adding a little bit of fog. This is not only going to create more contrast between these layers, but also give the feeling of these uh, background layers being in the far distance. So at this point, you might want to put your things in folders. So let's do M1 for Mountains 1. And I can grab all these with Shift-click and put them in this folder. M2, like that, 
and then FG for foreground. Oops, see I made a layer instead of a folder. FG, and I'll keep this guy just because it's just one layer on. But I might put it in its own folder later. So between these two mountains, we want to create a layer and call this uh, fog. Let's say. It should be atmospheric perspective, but whatever. It's basically fog. Um, go to the gradient tool, and then you have a couple options. This one where it's fading into transparency, choose that. And so whatever this foreground color is, that will be the one that... Um, and I never like to use all white or all black. I'll get close, but I try not to go all the way there because I really flatten the image. So look how on here, we've gone, gone ahead and created an atmospheric perspective. I mean, a, a fog that kind of rolls in. Now I want the fog to be more coming from... So I don't really want the fog in this area as much because it's uh, it's disrupting this focal point, I think. And here actually it's not working either. So maybe I don't need the fog or I'll turn it down and put it on. What if I do like overlay? Alright, well having little little details like this really adds to the depth of it. So even though you can't really tell, here it has done a little bit. I'm going to leave it because it's not really bugging me too much. Um, you can also do that between the foreground and here. Let's see if that looks good. So just the same thing. And maybe... See, that's nicer. Where it's just subtle and this gives it kind of a glow. So I'm going to go with that. And it fog 2, whatever. I think you can also call it fog. Um, or maybe not. Okay. So, let's... Uh, Add a little detail on the lake. This is a fun thing to do. I'm going to do whole, the whole series is going to do different pieces, but I guess I'll overlap a little bit. So, because um, this only takes a second, and if you're doing it, it really adds a lot to the piece and it'll give you a lot to experiment with. Honestly, after this, you could probably figure everything else yourself, out, everything else out yourself, but I'm going to go and explore trees and uh, share with you what I learned, and hopefully some of it will be helpful, or you could. Whatever you figure out, you should share with me, so I can use it. So just make squiggly lines here, like that. And don't forget, uh, be afraid to go over the edge and double back or whatever, like that. Done. Oops, I think I actually made this. All right, this is interesting. Let's see what happens. Usually there isn't a big chunk right here. It's always just little squigglies. So I'm on lake. I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to do a clipping mask. Okay. And I'm going to call this shine. All right, I shouldn't have made everything capital. Now I'm feeling obsessed about it. All right. Hide. I like to hide it so I can see what I'm doing. And maybe grab a... It's good to reuse colors. So, I don't know. I wanted it... Let's do something more saturated. See, that's kind of fun. See, that's interesting. It should be darker in the front and lighter in the back, though. Oh, but that's what this atmospheric perspective thing is doing. And let me turn on the opacity so I can do it lightly like that. See? See, that's better. Okay, so let's just delete everything there and start over. So lightly in the back. And I'm pushing more heavy in the, in the front. I'm not sure if that's the right color to have gone with. It's kind of fun, like if you look at it, it brings out a lot of color, but let's go ahead and experiment and choose a different color, a white. Or make it like it's a reflection, or ice. That kind of fits more with the wintry landscape. But I don't know if I like it. It makes more sense, but maybe it's not what I want. I'm going to go ahead and go back to that uh, more like aqua blue. Makes the water seem like they're tropical or something like that. Which is really interesting if it was in this landscape um, to have more tropical water. So let's go ahead and leave that. And I like the contrast because it's a little more saturated than everything else around it. And would that mean the river should be that color? Maybe. So if I wanted to do that, I would go over to uh, 
where I made the river, so that's in this first mountain range down here. And I go to river. I mean, it's like this. And I'm actually going to command click the river. And that'll select or click layer right here in the box. And that will select everything on that layer. I don't like that. So I'm going to put it back. And I'm going to go back here, and I want a smoother transition from this to the more tropical. So I'm going to go to the shine, and I'm going to switch from mode to clear. And erase out. Oops. So I'm still selecting another part, so I deselect Command D. And I'm going to Command click the shine. Select it. Hmm, it doesn't seem to be working for some reason, but it's okay. Since it's on its own layer, it doesn't matter. I can use the clear to, to with the opacity on to slowly fade this into the foreground. And see, I don't like that because it has more of a gradient effect than the sharp edges. So, you know what? Forget it. All right, let's go ahead and finish this guy off. So um, the last thing you want to do is add some gradients to different parts of your your painting. So, or no, the second the last thing, and the last thing we're going to do is um, is change the whole color scheme of this. We can make it really crazy in the very last step, or like yeah, just anyways. You'll see. There's a lot of different moods. So I went ahead and I'm grabbing the gradient tool. I chose a color a little darker for the top, and I want just a smooth transition. So I'm actually going to scroll up. So the thing with this tool, oh, I can't scroll up. Oh, it's going to do that. Okay. The thing with this tool is from where I first click, that's going to be dark blue. Where I last click, that's going to be completely transparent. And in between, it's going to be a smooth gradient between the two. So if I go like this from way up here, the gradient, this is where it's going to be this dark blue. But we'll, it'll be more subtle, basically. And then I can even come in here and, uh, oh, I didn't create a new layer, so that's not good. So let's create a new layer and call it Gradient Sky. And then uh, you don't have to make a clipping mask because this is the whole layer anyways, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of keeping things organized and like knowing, like, oh, that's for the sky. Okay, great. So I wanted to get above it because, look, if I don't get above it enough, and see how dark it gets. And I could do change that by sampling here. You select, oops, command Z, going like that. All right, but I want it to be a little more subtle than that. So I'm gonna zoom out. Like that maybe. That's kind of nice. I like how there's a slight angle to it. So I could, because I want kind of like that. And if I do it again, it's gonna layer it over and over. It. So I can do that, and I can lower it if I want, make it more subtle a little bit. Cool. And then I'm also going to want a gradient on, uh, do I want it on anything else? No, I think we're okay. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and just add that last layer, and then we can say we're done with this landscape. So we're going to put everything in a folder. I'll just call it everything. Grab everything you've done, put it in that folder, close the folder, then you're going to go up here to layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation. Okay, and use previous clear to create clipping mask like we have been doing. And then you're going to get, see over here you've got this layer. It's new and it's affecting everything there. Here you can go into, where'd it go? Alright, let's say I close this, let's say I'm confused. Alright, go back to layers, or view layers, window layers. Click on this, click on, double click on that little thing there. Oops, no, that's not it. Cancel. Double click on that thing. That little circle with a line through it. And then you can adjust the hue and the saturation. So look at that. That's very interesting. Kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that actually. You know what? And I can turn it off if I want to. And I can go ahead and go layer, new adjustment layer. 
And actually, another thing I like is color balance. I think that's what I usually use. Either one will, will, will do different things. So this one, so while this one you can change, oops, this one you have more control over the changing of hues. See, this one you can change the hue and saturation and lightness. But here, it's all about the hue. And you can change it in the mid-tones, highlights, and shadows. But just doing it in the mid-tones should uh, get you a point. So if you want a more magenta, you just turn up the magenta. And look at that. Everything is going to turn more purple. And you can go really crazy with it. Like, like a fairy princess world. If we, let's say if we make it more red, so it's all... I don't know, that's crazy. But usually if you do it more subtly, you'll get very interesting things. So here we're doing it red. Let's go into the bluer directions. See what that looks like. So here I'm really giving it a strong cyan. And if I take it more into the green side, so these all affect each other. So this has less green, it's more of a purple color. So I kind of like that. And so yellow is going to desaturate it back into, if you bring them all right on top of each other, it'll be pretty much the same thing that you already have. So if I move it over here, I'm going to get more, something much different, much more, much more different, much more different, much different. Anyways, it'll look different. So see, that like pretty much looks just like what I started with, just a little more blue. But I don't want that. I want to you move the yellow. Let's make it more blue like this. I don't know. Does that look cool? Anyway, you can just adjust it and play with it until you find something you like. Turn it off. Alright, nah, I like it with a little... Ooh, with both of them on, it's pretty fancy, magical. See, that's a little too much red, so you can turn both of them on. Alright, look at that. I like that. It looks like uh, this is like a magical spring, like, hidden in the mountains. That's cool. So I think that's it. Uh, let me just go ahead and make sure I didn't forget anything. Looking back at... So you can make all these mountains using the exact same procedure. We covered everything here. Shadows. Oh, there's the moon. That's where if you wanted to make a... a what's it called? Where is this guy? If you wanted to make like a moon, let's go ahead and make another moon. This is like a really weird fantasy landscape. So that's the one tool we haven't used yet is this ellipse tool. And so um, create a new layer. It's going to be in the background. Well, okay, actually it's going to be in front of the sky. So I'll call it moon. And it's not a clipping mask or anything. It's its own layer, but behind the mountain. And then if you hold down shift, it'll make a perfect sphere. So where do we want the moon? Like over here? Maybe just floating in the sky by itself. I think that's a nice spot for it. And then the, the composition goes like this sort of thing. So then I can go ahead and one thing I like to do sometimes with the moon is go with the brush and let's get a really bright. So I used it off of here because I want to reuse some of the same colors. Um, I'm going to go to uh, hide selection. I'm on the right layer. I've got this. Oh, it's on clear. So let's go back to normal. Forgot to change that back. Oops, there it is. So that is way too dark. It needs to be like white, white. And see, so if you keep doing it like that, you can. You know how like there's that half moon. It even looks like it's got craters and stuff already. I don't know if I like that because everything else is so flat. So it's kind of drawing too much attention. Oops, so maybe I'll just color in those craters on that side. Keep it flat on one side. And then uh, disappearing off there so there's still some interest. Cool, I like that. And if you wanted to make craters, you just kind of draw in some craters. Oops, deselect, you know, make a new layer, draw in your craters shade them in with the brush. I think you can figure out how to do a lot of stuff now that you've got this method. And I'm going to lower the opacity on this a little bit so it's more like, since it's daytime, it's more in the background. Alright, cool. I think that's it. I hope this was helpful. Peace, God bless, and stay fantastic, everyone.